Hi everyone, uh, my name is Lewis Stott. I look after customer success at Cohere. Um, at Cohere, we make large language models available via API for our customers. One of those is HyperEye. I'm here with Matt, the CEO of HyperEye. Uh, Matt, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Matt, co-founder and CEO of HyperWrite. We are the largest AI-powered writing assistant focused on the consumer. So Matt, um, tell us a little bit about HyperWrite and, and how it came to be. When, when was it founded and, and what do you guys do? Yes, yeah, so we were founded about a little over two years ago now, late 2020. And our goal really is to build the interface for the average person to interact with and get value out of these large-scale AI models like the models Cohere is building. Right. We're starting with writing. Eventually, we're going to do way more than that. We're really excited about where that's going. But right now, we're really focused on making it super easy for everybody to get a ton of value in terms of writing. So you basically can put something in, in your own words, a quick summary of what you want to say, and it'll actually write exactly what you want. So you can say, hey, I want an email that says this. Mm -hmm. And our AI systems, in partnership with Cohere, will actually translate that into a full, perfectly written email in your writing style saying exactly what you want it to say. Same thing goes for a document. You can explain what you want, a business memo anything. Our systems do that, and it's only possible because of large language models that have come into existence over the last couple of years, and our amazing partnership with companies like Cohere. Cool. And I guess it's fair to say that like a company like yours couldn't exist without large language models. Yeah. Um, so was this like an idea that kind of you had before the technology existed, and, and the technology kind of caught up and allowed you to start the company, or was it something that was kind of created when you saw the technology? Yeah, so I've been focused on the AI space and specifically language models since before they were really a thing, right? So I started with GPT-2, and how it came to be was I was working on another business and I was fine tuning GPT-2 on my own emails. And it was truly like remarkable seeing this thing write like me, understand me, know things about me. It was clear to me that there was something there, so I pursued it. Thankfully, a few months later, these models really started to take off. And it's been a wild ride ever since, to say the least. Now these models are so good that it enables things that we couldn't have possibly imagined mm -hmm. just two years ago. And I think we're going to be saying the same exact thing two years from now. And again, it's because of companies like you. Amazing, amazing. And can you tell us a little bit more sort of in detail about how you're using large language models? Like what particular things are you doing at, at HyperWrite um, for the end user, I guess? Yeah, so we like to assist writing across the sort of process of writing. So from planning to drafting to editing and iterating, we do it all, right? So for example, you can go on our platform and you could say, hey, write me an outline for a blog about AI. And our AI will actually draft you that outline. You could say, I don't like this, give me another option, right? And it'll just do that immediately. Once you find something you like, you can say, hey, write the first paragraph. You get that intro paragraph, it's perfect, and you say, finish it all up for me. And you have the whole blog ready to go in just a few minutes. Then you could say, okay, let's edit it. Can you make this paragraph a little bit longer? Can you proofread it, make sure it's grammatically correct? Can you make sure it's going to capture the attention of my reader, make it more engaging? All this stuff happens in real time, in seconds, with our platform and your technology. And it's pretty amazing to see. I think a lot of the world hasn't experienced technology like this yet. In the coming years, everyone will. And it's going to change how we do so many things. Yeah. I think writing is going to be the start of all of that. That's amazing. And, and when, you, when you first looked to integrate large language models within the product, why did you choose to go with a, a hosted large language model over like a self-build option or an open source yeah. option? There are so many options out there. And to us, at the end of the day, all we think about is our user, our customer, right? And with our customers, they don't care what model is underlying it. They care what it does for them, right? Yeah. And if we're building an open source thing, that's great. But we are not focused on the customer there. By working with a hosted solution like Cohere, we're able to focus our entire effort, our entire attention on the customer, understanding what they want, what they need, and building that for them and iterating that for them. It essentially takes out a whole sort of process of complexity that we need to go through if we didn't have this, enabling us to do more of what we do our best, what we do best, and not have to worry about the things that we're not good at. Yeah. Right? And I think there's so many companies like us that are amazing at building AI native products that don't have any sense of how to build and work with and host and serve these models. Right. And there's going to be a huge market opening up in the next few years where companies are going to need solutions like Cohere so that they can quickly get stuff to market, understand what people want, because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Yeah. And I mean, and I mean there's a number of companies like Cohere. There's a number of options that you could have gone with um, yeah. in terms of like hosted language models. Like what was it that made you lean towards Cohere or, or choose Cohere in the end? Yeah, so the models are amazing, right? That's one thing that's sort Good of table stakes. That's important, yeah. yeah. But more than anything else, we've worked with a lot of these companies, and Cohere is really good at just helping us do what we need to do, right? There's hands-on support. We can say any time of the day, we're having this problem. Can you help us solve it? Or we need to figure this use case out. We have not been able to do it ourselves. Can you help us? Right, and that's a superpower. Having your team as an extension of ours enables us to do 10 times more and 10 times faster, right? Amazing. And that's not possible without you. 
Amazing. And I guess we just kind of touched on it, but, but how has it been working with, with Cohere? It's um, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll stop you there. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, like I said, we've worked with a number of vendors. There's a clear difference in the quality of the support, the ability to assist us, the ability to help us grow. I mean, one thing I'll say is we are growing at a rate that most typical software vendors, not even talking about AI, wouldn't be able to keep up with. Yeah. And yet somehow, you've been able to keep up with that yeah. this whole time. Amazing, yeah. very pleased to hear it. Um, and then I guess, like, changing topic a little bit, but there's, there's some hesitancy around like, deploying large language models and integrating them within businesses and products because yeah. of the potential for you know, certain dodgy outputs or, or you know, how, how did you think about like, mitigating risk in terms of deploying this across, across HyperWrite? Yeah, product? it's a reasonable concern and clearly it needs to be mitigated. I think one thing that's really great is that currently you're seeing these models trend in the direction of safety, right? So it's not the same thing it was two years ago when you had no clue what was about to come out. Mm. You have a good sense of what's going to happen, what the model's going to do, how it's going to behave. Even if it's not the exact same every time, you at least know it's going to go in the right direction. But that doesn't mean nothing bad is ever going to come out of it. There are always edge cases. So we've found solutions in terms of working with things like filtering technology built for social media, where we have multiple layers of filters on top of our outputs. They're not shown to the user until they're checked, approved, and cleared. Yeah. Right, and we actually haven't had many problems at all. The scale we're at, you'd expect we would. Yeah. But it has been totally fine for us with these systems in place. And it's not hard to implement either. Yeah, amazing. I think I'd recommend that any company that's looking into this and that's their concern, think again, because it really isn't. Yeah. As long as you're doing the right things, you're thinking about it the right way, you're implementing the right systems, you're good. Yeah. And, and we've touched on the kind of the speed of like development and, and growth in this sector and in, in this technology. Um, are there any kind of like, potential kind of future use cases that you see coming down the line or, or what are you most excited about and where do you kind of see HyperWrite going with, yeah. with this tech? Yeah, so we see these models as essentially superpowers for users. We just have to give them to them in the right way, in the right format, in the right UX, right? That's what we do. We see our journey with HyperWrite in sort of two main steps and this is super oversimplified, but it's automate writing one yeah. and then two, automate everything else. Right, at, the, at the end of the day, 10 years from now, we see this as this ambient personal computing assistant that's always with you. It's able to listen to you. It's able to understand what you're doing at the time. It can overlay information in your field of vision with AR. Right? We see this as sort of like the evolution of things like Siri and Google mm -hmm. Assistant today. Yeah. They can be so much more powerful, so much more personal. They're going to help you with everything, not just writing, not just filling out spreadsheets, but pretty much anything you're doing in your life, advice, feedback it'll do for you. It'll be able to help you with your everyday interactions. As I'm sitting here, it'll be giving me cool things that I could be saying, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to know what you need, it's going to do it for you, it's going to help you along, and it's going to be with you all the time. And that's where we're going. And these models are going to enable that. Cool. And so obviously, coming off the back of that, there's going to be a lot of companies looking at deploying these models, and it's going to be you know, in many, many more businesses in the next couple of years. Like, What advice would you have to other like, IT leaders or business leaders that are, are looking to deploy these models within their organizations? Yeah, so first of all, get started today. The companies that start today are going to be the companies that win mm -hmm. in the long term because it's all about learning, right? We are in the position we are today with HyperWrite because we spent years learning how these models work, learning how they're going to grow, developing an intuition and a sense of how to use them, yeah. where to use them, when to use them, right? And there's only one way to do that. It's by doing it, right? You can't just think about it and say, we're going to do this next year. You have to start today, mm -hmm. right? That's the first thing I'll say. It's also make sure you're hiring in-house expertise for this. Not necessarily prompt engineers, but just people that have worked with these, these models, know how to use them, know how to deploy them. Because if you can do that, you can 10x your business, you can make such efficiency gains happen really quickly. There's so much value to be had, and I think people are just missing that. Okay, so, so tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, what, what does a typical HyperWrite user look like? Yeah. And you know, how has their work life changed, I guess, since adopting the tool? Yeah, so the typical HyperWrite user can look like anyone, because we've built what we call a general tool with specific use examples. Right, so HyperWrite can work for literally anyone in pretty much any situation because it works across the web. You can use it for your email, for your documents, whatever you're doing. If you're writing fiction, it'll work. Mm -hmm. Right, so let's say it's a general user base. We have four, let's say, main categories. So marketers are a big one. Business professionals is probably our biggest segment as of now. Mm -hmm. Students is growing. They're using it for ideas, for research, for help and assistance, editing, clarity, concision. And then we have English learners, people that are actually using it to help with their jobs, where they're speaking with people who speak English and maybe they don't speak English super well. This is a super amazing tool to help them be more effective, communicate better, and it's changing people's lives in that way where they're able to do things in jobs that they couldn't do before, mm. which is amazing to see, right? So if you think about our user base, it's so broad, it's so varied. 
but it works amazingly well because it, it's tuning itself for each use case. Whatever you're doing, it's going to get better at that for you. Yeah. Right. So it means whatever you're doing, you can value get value out of this product. It's it's pretty incredible and, to see. And of those um, areas that you just spoke about, is there one particular area that you're seeing most growth in? Like, is it students? Is it business users? Business and, professionals. And growth in general, I guess, at Hyperite. Like, how's that going? Well, as you know, growth has been remarkable. Um, yeah. I don't think we've even expected this level of growth, and we're actually outpacing previous growth, right? You typically see the percentage growth go down over time. We're seeing percentage change go up, yeah. which is hard to fathom, yeah. right? And with this growth, somehow you have kept up. Cohere has enabled us to continue doing what we're doing at increasing scale every week, every month, without much downtime at all, which is fantastic. So I want to first of all thank you for that. No, thank you. Um, but yeah, in terms of the biggest segments that are growing, I would say business professionals, probably the fastest growing, yeah. because we are one of the only tools, and by far the best tool, that works in things like email, for example. Yeah. You can go into Gmail today with Hyperwrite, and you don't have to write emails anymore. You could just type a summary of what you want to say, and it will literally write it for you, and it's going to be better than you could have written it yourself. Yeah. And that's powerful. Yeah. And there's a reason we're growing that fast. It's because people find so much value in this, and they tell their friends. Most yeah. of our growth is organic. Yeah. Right. We're doing a little bit of marketing, but really it's coming from people sharing it with each other. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much, Matt. Uh, super, super interesting to hear your thoughts on all of that. Uh, look forward to working with you into the future. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to it as well. Cool. Thanks. Thank mate. you.